Let's unite the right demonstrators and counter protesters prepared to descend on Charlottesville and Washington after last year's deadly events. Where do race relations stand across the United States? I want to bring in MSNBC contributor and political editor for the Root.com, Jason Johnson, and Charlottesville City Council member Wes Bellamy. Jason, let me start with you. You've made the pilgrimage to your alma mater uh, this weekend. You wanted to be there uh, for this anniversary. Why and what do you what do you expect to see over the course of this weekend? Well, you know, I wanted to be here. I'm, I'm a UVA alum. Um, this was a, a terrorist attack in the United States of America, and I, I really wanted to see how the community was responding. I've been to, unfortunately, too many places in this country over the last couple of years that have been victims of, of white nationalist attacks, either individually, uh, like the young man Richard Collins who was killed at University of Maryland College Park, that's 15 minutes from where I live, or Charlotte, uh, or not Charlotte, or Ferguson, Missouri, uh, where sort of militarized police attacked peaceful protesters, and I. Wanted to see if there was substantive change happening here. And, and I must admit, at least in the time that I've been here, the level of self reflection I've seen in this community is much better than I've seen in a lot of other places. They seem legitimately concerned here about not having these problems continue. Maybe it was because it was white nationalists, maybe it was because of the race of the victim, but either way, it seems like Charlottesville is making some changes. And that's, that's something I feel optimistic about. Wes Bellamy, on that note, uh, how has the conversation changed? How has that conversation continued over the last year? How much does this loom large uh, in Charlottesville, Virginia? Well, first, thanks for having me. And I would uh, be remiss if I didn't first give also uh, much respect and power to Sister Heather Heyer, who lost her mm -hmm. life last year, as well as the two officers who lost their lives. Now, in regards to the conversation here in Charlottesville, I think there's been an awakening, to say the least. I remember initially when I first started saying back in March of 2016 that we need to remove these statues of Robert E. Lee and we need to change the name of the park. Let's move forward with truly having open spaces for in all of our public spaces. People were saying that uh, I was causing trouble, stirring things up. This was the worst thing that ever happened in Charlottesville. None of these issues were here until I started talking about it on council. And now we see, and unfortunately it's taken the fact that someone's died, but to be quite frank, a lot of white people who have recognized not only their privilege, but also their bias that's been uh, a systemic oppression and a systemic oppressive state that has been here in Charlottesville for far too long. And we now are truly dealing with it. I think, unfortunately, um, the events of last summer ripped the Band-Aid off of what truly was going on. And when we took off that Band-Aid, we realized that while we thought it was a small cut, it actually was a deep wound. And you don't fix that wound overnight. You actually need surgery. So we're doing the true work, the true surgical work, to make sure that our community heals the right way in which it should. But that doesn't happen overnight. So we've seen these conversations in classrooms. We've seen them in grocery stores, barber shops, city council meetings. Literally everywhere you go, you hear people talking about these issues that we have in our community and bringing forth action behind our work. Words. Jason, when I've gone to Charlottesville, what's always struck me is how many parts of it are frozen in history. You walk the lawn, you see the old buildings, <laughs> you see history uh, right there, and then you, you see also how progressive a place it is, this being the seat of, of Albemarle County. Uh, how has that tension played out over the years? Are we getting closer to reckoning with our history there and elsewhere in this country? We were having a conversation just a little while ago about what those Confederate monuments uh, symbolize. A year after these protests in Charlottesville, are we, are we reckoning with them any better than we had been before? You know, it, it depends on who you ask, right? Because to be perfectly honest with them, I always felt whenever people have these conversations about healing, uh, you know, any doctor will tell you, you can't heal if you can't agree on the diagnosis, mm -hmm. right? Like, you talk about places that have been frozen in history. Yes, there are some monuments here. Yes, there have been places of progress. But you've also got, like, the Vinegar Hill neighborhood. That was a black neighborhood here in Charlottesville that was basically destroyed by the use of, of sort of white nationalist principles and eminent domain laws to kick black people off their land. Like, mm -hmm. that was recent. That was in the 50s and 60s. So, you know, you can talk about the more recent problems that people are discussing, but until there is real change in the systematic distribution of political resources and economic resources, um, you can't have that much of a change. I like that those conversations are happening. Um, I, I spoke to Brennan Gould, who's in charge of sort of the Charlesville Community Foundation. There's been changes in how grants are distributed. But, you know, as city councilman said here, it's a long process. So just talking is step one. The true healing, that's going to take years. Mm -hmm. Wes, how has the town dealt with the, the national spotlight that was shown on the city, of course, while all this was happening, but has been on it since we now associate Charlottesville 
at least in part with with this. I'm just going to read the president's tweet from this morning here. The riots in Charlottesville a year ago resulted in senseless death and division. We must come together as a nation. I condemn all types of racism, he writes, and acts of violence. Peace to all Americans. Uh, are you one who wants the president to talk more about Charlottesville? Do you want the national spotlight to continue? How much of your town's healing uh, is going to be done internally as a town? Does the national spotlight help or hurt? Well, first, let me say this. Our community is not defined by, nor do we care if 45 decides to uh, wish us well. Honestly, I'm just shocked that he's not on the side of the Nazis this year. So I guess that's a good thing. If you ever can think that we should be proud that the president of the United States is not uh, saluting and being happy that or saying that there are good people on both sides this year, I guess that's something for us to be proud of. I'm not. But in any event, when we look at where our community is, and yes, we've become a hashtag in some regards, but what we're hoping to do is actually be a model for the entire country. When you look at, uh, as my brother just talked about, the district distribution of resources within our community. Last year, I was able to pass this equity package that was essentially four and a half million dollars in resources from our budget to under-resourced communities. So you had job training resources in there, education resources, a $950,000 grant um, to our African American Heritage Center, public housing redevelopment funds, two and a half million dollars there. And that's really what it takes. So as a community, when we talk about these issues, we hope that we can also show other cities that it's one thing to talk about it, but you have to be able able to put resources behind it as a city or as a community. And further along with that, we want to be able to show people that any city can have a white supremacist attack. But what matters most is not that you just have an attack or these, these clowns come to your city and try to take it over. What matters most is that you stand up and fight them back with not just your fists, mm. but with your policies and your actions. So we as a city, we took a punch in the face last year, but we didn't lose the fight. We got back up. We're fighting together. We're standing tall together. And we're going to continue to move forward together because that's who we are as a community. We're not where we want to be, but we're definitely moving in the right direction. Okay leave it there on that note. My thanks to both you, Wes Bellamy and Jason Johnson, joining me from Albemarle County, uh, from Charlottesville, Virginia, on this Saturday. And stay with us.